All right, so um, I warned you guys in the intro that there are a lot of sections to uh, read this week. Uh, there's 10 of them, and so I have um, tried to combine as many of them as possible into um, videos. Um, but I am going to do a separate video here on 4.1, which is radian and degree measure, because this is basic. The understanding radians and degrees is the basics for everything moving forward. Most people really understand degrees. It's mostly the radians that are kind of mind-blowing and, like, what is this kind of thing. So um, that's what I'm going to focus on, try to explain what that is, and do several practice problems. So 4.1 covers describing angles using radian measure, using degree measure, using angles and their measures to solve real life problems. So several definitions here. So first, just with trigonometry. So trigonometry is the measurement of triangles. That's what the name comes from, but it is also measuring angles. Um, but the angles are usually formed based off of triangles. And um, we have found um, that actually a lot of things involving oscillations, like waveforms uses trigonometry and so it's more than just triangles these days um, so it's actually kind of two separate areas um, the triangle application which is more geometry and then calculus stuff which involves all the sine cosine waves and the graphs so an angle has two it has a vertex that's like the little corner of the angle and you have two sides a terminal side and the initial side terminal is where it ends that comes from the name terminal. Um, terminal cancer ends your life. <laughs> Very depressing, but that's the first thing I think of when I hear the word terminal. Um, so you measure your angle from the initial side to the terminal side. And when an angle is in standard position, you're on an XY plane, your initial side is always the X axis, and then you're going counterclockwise to get to the terminal side. So we always go counterclockwise to measure angles. And so if you're going clockwise, it's a negative angle. Angles with the same initial and terminal sides are called coterminal. And so there are infinite many of these because you can just keep going in a circle and um, create different angles, measurements, basically. So let's start with the radians. Most of what we do is in radians, especially when you get to calculus. So um, there's the official definition of the radian. I'm going to just let's take a look at this picture. Basically, one radian is the distance of, so I'm going to highlight here in yellow this um, thing labeled S is in card claim. So it's a, or it's a part of your circle. It's a little piece of the circle. So one radian is equal to when that particular distance is equal to your radius. So radian, radius, so those are related. So that arc length is usually determined called S, and when that's equal to that distance is the same as your radius, that is considered one radian. So the size of a radian changes based off of the size of your circle. So it's not a set size, but we usually refer to it based off of proportions of a circle. And if you're dealing with it in proportions, then it doesn't matter what your circle is because it's all going to be within a proportion. So um, usually we deal with a unit circle where your radius is one, so then it would be one radian. Those are exactly the same. So how much you're rotating from your initial side to the terminal side determines the measure that goes with that angle. And that is called the central angle of a circle. So the one where it's equal to one radian, that is the central angle. And for angles, we always use the Greek symbol theta. So that is our symbol for angles. So a circumference of a circle, if you're looking at the equation for circumference, it's 2 pi r. Um, so if the, a radian is equal to the radius, that's basically 2 pi radians, and 2 pi is about 6.28. So there's about 6 and a third radians in a circle. 
So you can see that picture here. Um, so that gives you an idea when you're saying, oh, something is four radians or five radians, where it kind of lands on the circle. <coughs> and we can use this relationship to label angles of a circle in terms of the circumference if we assume that the radius is one. So that way, the whole circle is then two pi radians. And that's the basics that we're going to be using when you use radians. We always do everything with the assumption that the radius is 1, which is where we're, we're calling the unit circle. So um, the unit circle here, when the radius is 1, you can then determine your angles, your radians, at different parts of the circle. So I just have this here to show you where like pi over 6 is, pi over 4, pi over 3. And these are fractions of 2 pi. So like half of 2 pi is pi. So that's why half the circle is going to give you pi. A quarter of 2 pi, when you do your math, 1 quarter 2 pi, that comes out to 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. So that's why a quarter of the circle gives you pi over 2. So these are just fractional parts of a whole circle, which has a circumference of 2 pi because we're assuming the radius is 1. So this is a nice handy reference um, that you can use because those are very common angle measures that we'll see in the next video. Oops. Oh, that, I thought I skipped two slides because I accidentally hit it twice. I guess I did not. So first example, determine where each angle lies on the unit circle. So these angles are given in radians. And so I had said that a radian is equal to the distance of that sector, but that's also what we're going to reference as the angle. So when we get that distance, we refer to that's we're really looking at the angle. So negative pi over 6. So pi over 6, you can see where it is on our picture there. So negative means we're going counter or we're going clockwise. So we're going in the opposite direction. So roughly this angle right here is negative pi over 6. You can think of it as taking pi, which is half the circle, and dividing, in, dividing it into sixths, and we have one-sixth of that. And then it's negative, so we're going clockwise. So that's the angle of negative pi over 6. I'm going to be switching colors here so that we don't get too confused. 11 pi over 9. So I try to look at, because when you have these fractions, it's really hard to like think about, well, what does this mean? So 9 pi over 9 simplifies to pi. So it's greater than pi. Pi is basically um, on the horizontal axis, because we're starting at 0 here. So pi is half of the circle. So I know it's going to be bigger than pi, so it's going to be further than that. So then I kind of look, okay, well, um, let's see. Well, I know that 9 pi over 9 is equal to pi. And then the next one that I can kind of look at is, well, 12 pi over 9. Well, what does that simplify to? Um, I can divide those both by 3. So that's 4 thirds pi, which is basically pi and a third. So that lets me say, okay, 11 pi over 9 is between pi and pi and a third. So then I'm going to just kind of eyeball. So if I kind of roughly think where these thirds are, and I'm just going to eyeball it because it doesn't have to be exact, but let's, it's going to be something like that in that general area. And that is going to be 11 pi over 9. So I'm, you're thinking about it in terms of your circle, in fractional parts of the circle, based off of that 2 is a whole circle. Next is 5 pi over 2. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing. So 4 pi over 2 reduces to 2 pi. So that is at our 0 point, because 0 and 2 pi, those are equal to the same. Um, and so 5 pi over 2 is an extra half pi. So um, pi over 2, I go back to that reference, 
is up 90 degrees. So that means that I am going to be going up 90 degrees, but I've already gone two pi. So the angle actually kind of circles around. So I've gone a full two pi, and then I went another basically quarter to get to the pi over two location to get that extra one half pi. So that puts the angle up here. And so this is five pi over two. And then the last one we have is four. So four doesn't have pi. So it's a little harder to think about because you're not in terms of pi. So you want to think in terms of what these numbers are equal to. So pi is 3.14 roughly. And um, so I know that it's going to be greater than pi because 4 is greater than pi. And if you recall, going back, we actually had where 4 radians is right here. Because if you think of, um, let's say, if I look at, let's see, 4, um, if, let's say, 2 pi over 2 is equal to pi, so then 3 pi over 2. If you put that on your calculator, you get about 4.71. And 3 pi over 2 is the bottom. It's the third, the three-fourths point right over. It's kind of hard to explain. You've got three quarters of the circle, so that's at the bottom. So that's 4.71, so it's going to be somewhere in between there. So it's roughly here, and that is equal to 4 radians. And... Then you kind of draw where you're counting from your, uh, you always start at the horizontal axis, axis in the positive quadrant, and then go clock counterclockwise for the positive angles. And so the way where I determine where these are is kind of a matter of deducing where known values are and then determining where it's located in reference to some known values. And that's where these pictures, these unit circle pictures come in handy to help you do that. So the one where it's just in radians or the one where it's all in terms of pi, those are very helpful. So example two here, determine two coterminal angles, one positive and one negative for each angle. So when things are coterminal, and I'm going to go back to that slide that I, oops, not subtitles, I've hit the wrong button. Um, co-terminal angles, they um, have the same initial and terminal sides. And so you're basically going in a circle. You're completing, you can get to the same angle by circling around. So if you're going to make an incomplete circle, that's 2 pi. So finding co-terminal angles is roughly adding or subtracting 2 pi from your existing value. So we have 2 pi over th uh, 3, so to get m another one, I can do 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi. And so if you're going to have to get a common denominator, that's 2 pi over 3 plus um, 6 pi over 3, which gives you 8 pi over 3. So that's a positive coterminal angle. And then to get a negative, we can try subtracting. So we have 2 pi over 3 minus 2 pi, which is 2 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, which gives you negative 4 pi over 3. And then that is a negative coterminal angle. So the next one we have here is negative 9 pi over 4. So same thing. Um, I'm going to do negative 9 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. So then I need to get a common denominator, which will be 4. So that would be plus 8 pi over 4. And that gives me negative 1 pi over 4. So that is a negative angle. That's coterminal. And I have to get one negative and one positive. If I subtract 2 pi, I'm going to still be negative. So I need to add 2 pi again. So I can take that existing angle, 
and add 2 pi. Or you can start with your original one and add 4 pi because you're adding another 2 pi around. So that's negative pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4. That gives you 7 pi over 4. A lot of working with radians is working with fractions. And you're going to be adding 2 pi or subtracting 2 pi or pi over 2 or pi over 3. You're working with fractions a lot. So if you have a calculator that can do fractions, that will make it a lot easier for you. You don't have to do the work to manually convert them, get a common denominator, all of that stuff. Okay, now degrees. People are fairly uh, familiar with degrees. So a degree is equivalent to one ro a rotation of 1 over 360 about the vertex. That's because a circle is defined to have 360 degrees. So what that means is that two radians is equal to 360 degrees, and this gives us a conversion factor between radians and degrees. And so I have here the unit circle with all of the key degree points measured. So that way if you're trying to identify where something is in degrees, you can take a look at your circle here. I don't have any examples of locating based off degrees because that's a lot easier than locating based off of radians. So as I mentioned, you have a conversion factor and you use that to convert between radians and degrees. And you're basically using a unit conversion or you're doing dimensional analysis, which is another term for that. So if 360 degrees is equal to two pi radians, then 180 degrees is equal to pi. And so, and if you have a number with no units, we always assume that it is in radians. So usually we don't even write the word radian, we just write it in terms of pi, and it's assumed that it is in radians. So we're going to convert the following from degrees to radians. So I'm negative 60 degrees. So this is a unit conversion, so we need to have the degrees on the bottom and radians on the top. So we're going to use 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So you're multiplying by pi over 180. So this gives us negative 60 pi over 180, which I can divide both by 10 and get negative 6 pi over 18, and then divide them both by 6 to give me negative pi over 3. And that is the equivalent in radians. Same thing with 144, so I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180. So the way I remember is that if I want radians, pi will be on top. And if I want to get rid of radians, then the pi needs to be on the bottom so it cancels. So this gives me 144 pi over 180. Um, and these actually both divide by 6 which I only know because I have did this problem earlier today. I had um, divided them by 6 and then divided by 6 again, and actually they're divide, divisible by 12. But I'll do them by 6 because that's how I did it this morning. So when you divide 144 by 6, you get 24. Um, and then 180 by 6 is 30. And then you can divide them by 6 again, which gives you 4 pi over 5. And then that is what 144 degrees is equal to. So now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to convert from radians to degrees. So I have negative 7 pi over 12 radians. And I should have made that a little larger. So I need to this time multiply by 180 over pi because I need the pi parts to cancel out to make it into degrees. So then I would have a negative 7 times 180. Um, so I'll get my calculator out because I actually did this all in one step this morning. 7 times 180. Okay, so that's negative 12, 6. Oops, I wrote my negative twice. <laughs> 1260 over 12. So then you just divide that by 12. You get negative 105 degrees. 
And you need to make sure you put that degree number because if you are the symbol. If you don't put the degree symbol, then we assume it's radians. Same thing with 5 pi over 4. This time, oops, I am multiplying by 180 over pi. So that the pi's cancel. So I have 5 times 180, which is 900 over 4. And when you divide that, you get 225. So this is 225 degrees. If you're lucky, you have a calculator that will convert between degrees and radians for you. Um, I'm not sure if my calculator does. I've never actually tried. <laughs> I just know how to change the mode that my calculator is in, but I don't know how to actually convert from degrees to radians. I'm sure there is some way to do it. I just um, do the pi over 180 or 180 over pi trick. So it's really not that much work. Okay, so arc length. I had mentioned arc length in the very beginning when we were defining what a radian is, and um, we use S as the symbol for that. So we actually have a formula to find the arc length. So it is S equals R theta, and theta has to be in radians. Most of what we do is in radians. So I have, you know, I am just much more familiar with radians than I am with degrees just because mostly everything in trig is done in radians. So you have to make sure your angle that you're given is in radians first before you use that formula. So we're going to find the arc length on a circle of radius 3 meters intercepted by a central angle of 150 degrees. What that means is that we have, let's see, this is our angle right here. And so we want the arc length, which is this distance of the circle, how long that is. So our formula is S equals R theta. Theta is the angle, but it needs to be in radians. So I need to convert 150 degrees to radians. And I do that by multiplying by pi over 180. So that's 150 pi over 180, which is 15 pi over 18. And you divide both by 3, you get 5 pi over 6. So now I can plug this into my formula. So S equals R, the radius, 3 times 5 pi over 6. So we can reduce this. This actually gives us 5 pi over 2. But when we give arc length, we usually give it as a decimal. So then you would um, find your decimal approximation. And so 5 pi divided by 2 is 7.8539 and so on. I'm going to round it two decimal places, so that would be 7.85, and it has the same units as the radius, so that's going to be 7.85 meters approximately. So that's our arc length. Um, linear and angular speeds. So this is something that actually pops up more in physics. So consider a particle moving at a constant speed along a circular arc of radius r. So I'm going to just, if we have our circle, we have some particle moving along in a circle. If the length of the arc traveled in time is, if s is the length of the arc traveled in time t, then the linear speed of the particle is the arc length divided by time because the arc length has some unit like meters or feet divided by time that gives you speed like we just found an arc length of 7.85 if it did that in one hour that'd be 7.85 that was meters per hour so it's just basically doing the units moreover if theta is the angle corresponding to the arc length s, then the angular speed, so angular speed is something that pops up more in physics, um, is omega. So that is a, it looks like a w, it's the Greek symbol omega. The angular speed is the angle divided by the time, hence angular speed. So our angle in that example was 150 degrees, but we have it in radians. So that would be 5 pi over 2 
um, meters per hour, basically, because then the units there were meters, and I just made up the time was in an hour. And then it has this remark, so this is all from the textbook, linear speed measures how fast the particle moves, angular speed measures how fast the angle changes. So that's the difference. To establish a relationship between linear speed and angular speed, divide each side of the formula for arc length by t, and you get speed equals the radius times the angular speed. Um, you do not need this at all for anything on the application assignment. Um, you can do the application assignment without knowing linear and angular speeds. I have some seen some people use linear speed to do the application assignment, and you can do it that way, but you don't have to. Actually, I did not do it that way. That was not my first instinct. Area of a sector of a circle. So here is a formula for area of a sector, which is what we call a portion of the circle. It's A equals one-half R squared theta. And again, theta, the angle, has to be in radians. So find the area of a sector of a circle of radius 2.5 feet and central angle 225. So I'm going to just draw a really bad circle. So 200, this is 180 degrees. This is 270. So it's going to be somewhere um, here. So our sector is this. We're looking for this area. So area equals 1 half r squared theta. So we have to convert our angle to radians. So I have 225 degrees. So I need to multiply by pi over 180. So we have 225 over 180 pi. I can divide those both by 5. 45 pi over 36. Well, 9 goes into those, so that's 5 pi over 4. So I've got 5 pi over 4 as my angle, so now I just use the formula. A equals 1 half times the radius, 2.5 squared, times our angle, 5 pi over 4. Now we're going to just put this as a decimal, so I'm going to just put this all in my calculator at once. And round, let's see, so if I put that all in my calculator, I get 12.2718463. So I'm going to round to two decimal places, so that's 12.27. And then this is area, so it's feet squared. And so that is the area of that sector of a circle. So um, that is basically everything that goes on in 4.1. It's the basics of radians and degrees. And um, now that you understand radians, if you watch my next video, which is on the unit circle and right triangles, then you'll really start to make the connection between the unit circle radians and how all of the triangles fit in. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me or give me a call. And I look forward to working with you guys in the discussions and having some great conversations.